And folks, I'm running for lieutenant governor for one reason and one reason only. Because I don't believe that this is a battle between left and right or Republican and Democrat. I believe this is a battle between good and evil. I believe this is a battle between right and wrong. I believe this is a battle between freedom and tyranny. Or as Ronald Reagan put it, I believe this is a battle between whether we continue to go up or we go down. Not too long ago, somebody asked me, well, what if it appeared we had crossed the Rubicon? What if it appeared that things had gotten so bad that there was no way back? What would you be doing then? This is the answer I gave and I share it with you. I said, out of 315 million plus Americans, every American ought to have this attitude. If I am the only one left, the only one who is standing up for freedom, the only one who is standing up for the Constitution, the only one who is standing up for the values that made this country great, then I will do it until I breathe my last breath, but I will never, ever, ever give up on the United States of America. I hope that's the attitude that you have. A friend of mine told me they'd gone to a meeting of the Concerned Women for America to thank the volunteers who worked in the election and said that his wife dragged him there because he had told her, I'm done. I'm disgusted. Tired of it. You work hard and this is the result. He said, let's just live out our lives as best we can. And if they want to take the country to you know where, in a handbasket, he said, look, we, we, we've got our own lives to live. And he went to that dinner, and it so happened that I was the person who spoke. And I shared my heart about our commonwealth and about this country. And he said he went home apologizing to his wife for ever having considered giving up. Folks, the first kind of leadership that we need in every election in this country, and that includes this one right now, is we need leadership that will inspire us to remember who we are and where we've come from and what has been accomplished. You know, the reason why that book is called The 5,000 Year Leap is that for 5,000 years, human beings lived out a meager subsistence existence, spending their days trying to survive until the next day. And that was the lot of mankind. Unless you were extremely wealthy, unless you were a king, unless you were royalty, you basically struggled to live. And along came the United States of America. And suddenly people who were ordinary from the perspective of history, who weren't from a background of royalty, could suddenly live in a way that others could only have dreamed of. Folks, that's what we're fighting for. That's what's at stake. The greatest nation in the history of mankind. And let me remind you that the foundations were laid here. It was a Virginian who led in the Revolutionary War and fought successfully for our, for our freedom. It was a Virginian who penned the words, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It was a Virginian remembered better than almost any president is remembered who thundered with the words, give me liberty or give me death. And it was a Virginian who framed what we now call the Constitution of the United States, but you all know that before it was called that, it was called the Virginia Plan. Virginia is where the foundations were laid and Virginia is where they must be restored, but we've got to have leadership that will inspire us to remember who we are. Remember what we've come from. Remember the price that's been paid to give us the liberty that we now enjoy. Ronald Reagan said in one speech, he said, they call me the great communicator. He said, but I'm not a great communicator. He said, but I communicate great things. But they didn't originate with me. They are the things that are in the hearts of the American people. And that's why they resonate. So folks, if the things I say touch you at all, it's only because what's in my heart is in your heart too. And we've got to have leadership that reminds us that this, I believe, beats 
in the heart of every single American. Whether there's been an attempt to indoctrinate, an attempt to manipulate, an attempt to frighten people into being against the very values that made this nation great, we've got to awaken those values again. Folks, my father worked 33 years in Sunship Building and Dry Dock Company in Chester, Pennsylvania. In the snow, the cold, the heat, the rain, it did not matter because he believed that there was a better life possible for his son than he was experiencing. He didn't want your food stamps, he didn't want your handouts, he didn't want your keys. All he wanted was to be left alone and to work and build a better life for his son. Do you remember when the average American was too proud to want a handout? We helped one another as neighbors and friends, but we weren't expecting the government to come take care of us. Folks, I believe that sense of independence and that thirst for freedom beats in the heart of every American, but it must be awakened. And when we speak truth to people, that truth resonates in the human heart. I can tell you story after story after story about black folks and Hispanic folks that I've had the opportunity to address. And when I've addressed them, they, they say, you know, I, I hadn't thought about it. I went to Buckingham County and spoke there, and there was a black woman in the audience. And later on, a woman said, I sent her there to hear you. She's a dyed in the wool Democrat. She said, but I told her, just please don't listen. Just go listen to what he has to say and judge for yourself. She said, she got into the parking lot and called me immediately. She said, I just left. She said, well, what do you think? She said, you messed me up. <laughs> because she said, I agree with everything he said. Folks, pe people need to be inspired. My wife and I had listened to Jimmy Carter talking about the malaise and, and turn your thermostat down to 68 and every excuse he could come up with for his failed leadership. And then we started listening to Ronald Reagan and Ronald Reagan started talking about a city set on a hill. He wasn't talking to black people, to white people, and brown people. He was talking to Americans. He was talking about the last best hope on earth. He was talking about mourning again in America. And after listening to him for a while, my wife and I looked at each other one day and said, you know, I think we're conservative. <laughs> and we were. We just didn't know it. <laughs> and folks, there are a lot of people out there like that. And we've got to awaken them. We need unity. I was talking to some of you earlier about the problems that we have in our own party right now. And we've got to bring people together. Some people ask me, well, how could you support George Allen? You ran against him. How could you then support him? I said, it's very simple. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Either we are unified or we lose. I gave my word that if I won, uh, I would expect everybody to support me. And if I lost, I would support whoever the nominee was. We've got to have that attitude again persisting in our party. <clears throat> and then folks, we need to be able to broaden this effort and reach out to people that we've never reached before. They're out there. We've got to bring them in. And the last thing I say is this, and I'm not ashamed to say this, we've got to remember that our founding fathers did not believe that America was an accident of human history. They believed that this is a providential nation. And folks, the idea that we're going to solve the depth of our problems without divine providence, to me, is foolishness. I'm not saying we gotta argue with people to be a member of this church or that church or my denomination or yours or this theological perspective, but folks, I've had three atheists, three, three, count them, come up to me and say, you know, I don't, I, I don't agree with you about this God stuff. But I do agree with you that this nation is founded on that ideal and that that does make this nation special and say, I like the often say, I like the idea that Americans feel that we answer to something higher than ourselves. Now, folks, if atheists get it, <laughs> if atheists get it, I think the rest of us can certainly get it without feeling that anybody's trying to impose a particular religiosity on our citizenry. But we do need God and we do need prayer. Now, Ronald Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation from extinction. We do not pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for and protected and passed on to them to do the same. Or we will spend our sunset years spending telling our children about the United States of America, where once men were free. I was raised in a foster home. My father rescued me out of it. I was a juvenile delinquent and a failure in fifth grade. And because my father believed in me and believed in this country, and he came up in a very 
much more difficult time than anything I've ever experienced. But he told me, son, this is America. You can be anything you want to be. You go out there and work for it. Don't come back to me with excuses. I went from an F student in fifth grade to an A student in sixth grade, went on to graduate summa cum laude from the University of Massachusetts with a Phi Beta Kappa Key, and then went to Harvard Law School and Harvard Divinity School, served my country in the United States Marine Corps, and folks, not only do I say that, I don't say that at all, pat myself on the back, but I say that to thank my dad, my, my wonderful father, who loved me and loved this country and believed in his possibilities, but I also say it to recognize that in America, in America, you can go from nothing to being something. That's the promise that this country has held out, and that's what's trying to be ripped away from us. That's what they're trying to take from your children and your grandchildren. And I'm telling you that I am running because with every fiber of my being here in Virginia, I believe we need to draw a firewall and say this far and no further. We are not going to allow you to fundamentally transform the United States of America. Virginia is where it started, and Virginia is where we're going to champion the values of this country. nothing like it and there's no substitute for it. Freedom is why I support the Ninth and Tenth Amendments being restored to their proper place so that our founding fathers and what they bequeathed us is a counterpoise to an overreaching federal government. Freedom is why I support a taxpayer bill of rights to say that the government enrichment can't go beyond the rate of inflation and beyond the growth of the economy so as to continue to reach into the pockets of the, the Virginia taxpayers and take our money. Freedom is why I believe that this transportation bill, the expansion of Medicaid, and setting up these exchanges to allow federal exchanges in Virginia are all a mistake, and I ask the governor to veto them. And freedom is why I support a constitutional amendment to give universal parental choice in education. You should be able to choose, and parents should be able to choose where their children go to school, not have the government dictating that to parents. Freedom, folks. Freedom. Let not the legacy we pass on to our children be the end of freedom, but let it be renewed freedom. The freedom that allows us to look at that flag and, and have goose pimps arise. Goose pimples arise on our, our necks. I'm tired. Aren't they pimples too? Goose bumps is right. Thank you all so much. But freedom. Freedom, folks. And, and some of you said to me, uh, in fact, CJ was just saying, you know, thanks for the sacrifice that you are making. Uh, but folks, so much greater sacrifice has been made by so many. So many. I buried a young man by the name of Je Sergeant Javon Jordan. I presided over his funeral. He, was, he went to, for a second tour in Iraq, and before he left, his mother cautioned him, I, I wish there was some way for you not to go, because I, I'm just afraid that you might not come back. He looked in the eye and said, Mother, I am not afraid to give my life for my country. I think what I'm doing, what we all are doing, and staying active is a small price to pay for all that we've been given. So we cannot ever quit. This is the legacy that we've got to leave to our children and our children's children and is captured in my favorite patriotic hymn, My Country Tis of Thee, Sweet Land of Liberty of Thee I Say, Land where my fathers died, Land of the Pilgrim's Pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. And that last verse is the one I love the most because it's a prayer. You know, George Washington's men saw him out in the woods praying one day and he prayed on his knees when he prayed. And they came back and said to his adjutants, you know, the general's out there in the woods praying. Is it that bad? <laughs> and they said, no, he does that every single day. So much for giving me a chance to speak to you. I ask for your vote. After the convention on May 18th, 
if you support me, make a contribution to my campaign. And, uh, and please, whether you support me or not, pray for our country, pray for our commonwealth, and pray for me. God bless.